Check out these catkins. Gorgeous hazel catkins. Anyway, uh, so I had a plan for this morning, which didn't really go very well, but it didn't go to plan. Um, because the forecast was widespread frost across the country and virtually no frost at all anywhere. So I don't know how they can be that inaccurate. So I decided to come down to where my feeding station is. Um, I'm just so lucky to be on this land, it's absolutely amazing. And my feeding station is just back up that way. But there's some beautiful land down here as well. Uh, and I'm already checking out for another, fe another potential feeding station for next year basically, uh, because I think it's gonna be better. I've been down here before and I've checked it out a little bit. Um, but because I just happened to be here at the right time, almost the middle of winter, fairly early in the morning, I can see exactly where the sun's going to be, I can see exactly how the background's going to be affected, and then I'll know whether it's going to work or not. Right, I'm down here. So this is where I'm looking at the moment. I'm going to spin around. In fact, you can see behind me. So this is what I'm thinking of a potential bird photography feeding station, probably for next winter. Uh, it's just got all the ingredients to look for really. Now the sun's over there, um, pretty good sun position. It's just a really nice open area, there's no trees blocking it. Um, lots of grass there, really nice wild grasses. There's actually a path going through the middle of it which I might be able to use as a really clear background if I choose to. And then further off into the background is just like a woodland edge, just a line of trees but it kind of looks like a woodland edge. Also further back there's actually a beech tree, there's still some beech colour showing on there so I could probably include that orange colour in the background as well. Um, yeah, looks really really good. In terms of the background diffusing, if you're using a long lens then it's going to diffuse the background pretty well anyway and it's not very messy. I thought the background was going to be too messy when I first looked at it uh, just I think just because of the kind of branches they are, there's some quite thin branches over there and they all tend to merge quite well to make a decent background. If you've got the thicker branches then it might look a bit more cluttered. This is probably the most important process of setting up a feeding station, is actually the recce in beforehand and just trying to get it absolutely bang on, don't leave anything to chance, you know, get everything as perfect as you can. It's never going to be 100% perfect, it never seems to work out like that, um, but the better you can get everything from the start, the more chance you've got of getting fantastic photos. Checking the position of the sun, it's January the 18th today, uh, it's about 10 o'clock, sun's directly in front of me there. So I've just come down like right to the bottom corner uh, to check out this as a possible position for a hide um, but I think it's probably going to be too dark down here as you can see this area is in shade further up there the sun's actually starting to light that area so it does depend on like what month it is exactly so if you're, if you're doing your own scouting to set up a feeding station if you try and check it out almost at the shortest day of the year that's quite a good idea because if you do that you know when the sun is actually going to be at the lowest point and you know any time either side of that the sun's always going to be higher but also I need to think about later on as we get into February and March the sun's going to be coming up further to the left so it's actually going to be better and then by 10 o'clock it's going to clear those trees completely so um, it's going to vary a bit and that's why I like to use the temporary hides the pop-up hides you can move around because sometimes as the sun does change it makes sense to actually move the hide a little bit so again that background just looks absolutely perfect and in terms of habitat it's always good to see what kind of plant life you've got around I've got the remnants of thistles here which is going to attract various birds uh, maybe some goldfinches and then over here oh wow we've got uh, some bramble so probably blackberries I mean it's just fantastic um, yeah bramble's always a good one um, and then willow there's quite a few willow trees so the uh, the willow trees they're really good for photography actually make fantastic perches for small birds what else have we got also I think it's burdock Let's have a look. anybody can tell me this if I sometimes forget these things this stuff for example I think this is burdock is it and there's also a few birch trees dotted about as well, so um, they can be great just on their own, you know, rather than having to put up a separate perch, one that you um, you create yourself. You can always try and use what's there. It's often better if you do, actually. Well, this birch tree could be a good one for a woodpecker, for example. Nice natural perch. Now, I've just come further down, and it looks like we've got blackthorn. So I'm pretty sure that's blackthorn, absolutely covered in lichens. I mean, look at this. 
covered in lichens, which is fantastic for photography. Uh, so plenty around here, plenty going on. Uh, this is essentially the background I was looking at, which has also got loads more bramble. I've seen tons of wrens in here, a few blackbirds, often field fairs and red wings flying about. I really, really want bullfinches and they've just not come to my current feeding station. Uh, but every time I come down here, I hear bullfinch. I've just heard a pair today. I think there was three or four bullfinches. So maybe in this quiet little area, in this natural habitat, uh, maybe the bullfinches are more likely to come down. We'll see. This is one of the few areas where there's actually some frost around. A little bit of crunching underfoot. Now what I've got here as well is a little bit of a marshy area. Um, down here behind me, if it's very wet, that looks like it's going to fill up with water. Now when I came down here, walked past, there was a bird, I kind of flushed the bird that had been sat in the ground and it flew up uh, very quickly. I only got a glimpse of it, but I think it was actually a woodcock, which would just be amazing. I've never ever photographed a woodcock, never had a good view of one. And the landowner said that there is actually a woodcock down here in the woods. And the way it flew off, it was really, really fast, very fast whirring wings. Um, it was very woodcocky. So that's the thing as well, if you set up a hide somewhere, you might be after one species or one kind of species like the small birds, but you never know what else you're gonna see. And if you're down there, if you're in the hide, being quiet, unseen, then other stuff is probably gonna appear. This is just like a massive stand of blackthorn. Look at it. It's friggin' huge. It's all blackthorn in there. It's so dense. That'll be a fantastic place for birds to nest. It's so dense in there. It's like a thick thicket. Um, this is a great clearing. This I would have used for photography. This looked like the most perfect place for a photography feeding station. Um, and it's a lovely clearing. So you think that it would be perfect for the light, but because of the position of these trees, the light doesn't get through until like about one o'clock in the afternoon, so it's just totally useless. Uh, such a shame, because again, it's in a perfect spot really. Uh, got these big umbellifers. If I'm here in the frost, these are gonna be worth photographing. They'll look very, very good, frosted up. And of course the catkins, wow. Oh, these hazel catkins are just looking absolutely fantastic at the moment. Uh, they're really starting to look their best middle of January and they're already out, which is not uncommon these days. Um, yeah, right light on that, a little bit of frost as well, they're uh, gonna look really good. Um, it's, uh, it's a little bit further away than I'd like, I'm carrying all the gear, um, but I think I've gotta do it. It's just so gorgeous down there. I say all the ingredients I would look for in a feeding station. Uh, I know there's quite a bit of bird life down here already. Um, so hopefully I'll set that up probably for next winter. Yeah, looks good. Uh, background's good, light's pretty good. And I know there's birds down there. I know there's bird life already. But it's certainly wild down there. And lots of bramble and all the seed heads as well. And they're all really good for birds. I'm sure I could hear a vole or something. A little mouse or a vole squeaking. There's probably tons of stuff like that around here. Thanks very much for watching the video. If you haven't subscribed, do click on the subscribe button and the uh, bell icon to make sure you get notified of new nature photography videos. And hopefully next time I'll have a camera in my hand, I'll give you some tips on nature photography. Um, but yeah, until next time, see you then.